Good morning. Good to see you on this chilly morning. Did you hear the news reverberate through Roy City? We got a trophy last night. We, the youth braved the cold and the wet last night and lit up the skies of Roy City in our lighted Christmas parade, and we won a trophy for the most comical. Our llama was pretty cute. Anyways, great time last night. Good morning. All right, just a couple of announcements this morning. First up, we still have a few signs left at the entrances, so if you'll grab a yard sign to help us advertise our Christmas Eve services, go plunk one in your front yard so when people drive by, they'll know. That would be great. They're at all the entrances, so grab one today before you leave. Second up, if you look inside your bulletin, the second advertisement right below the Our Daily Bread one um, has our service of hope and healing, which will be on December the 20th. If you or someone you know is just a little down this holiday season, uh, we invite you to come that night. It's a great, uh, great atmosphere for worship and some healing too. The insert or the 
picture in your bulletin has an incorrect time, though. We were a little confused when we ran the bulletins this week. The time for that is 6 o'clock instead of 7. So if you'll make a note in your bulletin and in your calendars, that would be great. The service of hope and healing is December 20th at 6. And finally, our Christmas cookie concert is next Sunday evening. So if you'll come, bring your friends and family. It's going to be a great time. We'll have some delicious cookies and great Christmas carols and whatnot, and we hope you'll join us for it. All right, well, my name's April. If you need anything while you're here this morning, just give me a little wave. I'll be glad to come help you out, or if you have any questions after the service, come see me too. Dinner for Eight registrations are live online, so if you want to register for that, come see me at the end of the service. I'll help you do that. Enjoy worship today. Okay, it's time to remember why we're here, that we're here to worship our God. So let's stand and raise as one voice. I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness, I'm trading my pain, I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. And we say yes Lord, yes Lord, yes, yes Lord, yes Lord, yes Lord, yes, yes Lord, yes Lord, yes Lord, yes, yes Lord, amen. Well, I'm pressed but not crushed, persecuted, not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. I'm blessed beyond the curse, for His promise will endure, that His joy is going to be my strength. Though the sorrow may last for the night, His joy comes in the morning. I'm trading my sorrow. Trading my shame, I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness, I'm trading my pain, I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. And we say, Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Well, I'm pressed but not crushed, persecuted, not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. I'm blessed beyond the curse, for His promise will endure, that His joy is going to be my strength. Though the sorrow may last for the night, His joy comes in the morning. I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. For the joy of the Lord, I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Amen. Well, good morning. Welcome to Roy City First United Methodist Church. I'm Chris Everson. I'm the pastor here. I just want to welcome you and thank you for being here to be a part of our service today. I invite you to have a seat because we are moving into our second Sunday of Advent. I want to invite the Summers family forward to help light our second Advent candle. Good morning. Good morning. We continue this season by waiting, by lighting the second candle, anticipating the light of the star that shone over Bethlehem for all to see. 
a reading from 1 Peter 1, 8 and 9. Though ye have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with the inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Let us pray. Wondrous God, we open ourselves to hear you call today to become those who not only see the joy all around us, but can also be joy and bring joy to all around us in our lives, our families, our communities, and our world. May the world so calm and bright. Amen. Hey, let's stand for another song. We stand and lift up our hands For the joy of the Lord is our strength We bow down and worship Him now How great, how awesome is He And together we sing Holy is the Lord God Almighty The earth is filled with His glory Holy is the Lord God Almighty The earth
our time of prayer. I invite you, if you haven't already, take the a little tab that's on your worship bulletin and just rip that off and register your attendance with us, especially if you're visiting, because we want to thank you for being a part of our worship service this morning. Also, on the back side of that, there is a place for you to uh, leave a prayer request. If you have something that you would like for us to, to pray over this next week, please uh, fill that out and drop that in the offering plate, because every Tuesday when our staff gathers together, we go over every single prayer request that is lifted up in our church services because we know that it, it is an honor and privilege to be praying for you as your church staff. As we move into our prime time of prayer, I have just one uh, update that I'd like to give to you. Uh, Rip uh, Ripley, our, our normal uh, guitar player, uh, we've missed him for the past 40 days. He's been uh, sick. And uh, the latest report that we've got is that he's doing much better and hopefully uh, he's moved out of ICU and hopefully moving to a rehab wing over at uh, downtown uh, Dallas Presby, uh, hopefully tomorrow. And uh, hopefully we'll get him back, we'll get a guitar back into his hand so he can start playing again. And because uh, I know he really, really misses it. The last time that I uh, talked to him, he was like, man, I really miss playing. I said, well, you have a little bit more important things to be worried about right now than playing guitar, but I know uh, he appreciates your thoughts and your, your prayers as he continues to recover. So with those prayers that we have on our hearts and our minds, I invite you to take a moment to silently lift your prayers up to God, and then we will join together and close with the Lord's Prayer. Would you please go to God in prayer with me? God, this morning, we remember the glory, the glory that surrounds this uh, season, the glory that revolves around who you are, and we give thanks. We give thanks that as we prepare for uh, the actual day that we celebrate the birth of the Christ child, we remember the events that led up to that birth. How you looked out and you saw that we were not connected with you. That we did things our own way. So you sent your son to be light to us. You sent your son so that we may be made right in and through you. You sent your son so that we may be children of God. So, Lord, help us to think about the ways that we can share that light with others. Help us to think about the way that we can be the church that you have called us to be. And, God, as we continue to move through the season, uh, hurried and busy and trying to get all of our tasks done, 
Help us to stop and to pause and to remember the Christ child that is born on Christmas Day. So Lord, as we lift our prayers up to you, we lift up the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This time I'd like to invite the ushers forward to receive our offering. And as they come forward, I just want to give you another opportunity to remember about our special Christmas Eve offering. Last year, you remember, we uh, took up a special Christmas Eve offering to help pay off the uh, student lunch debt over at Davis Elementary School. And we saw a report that they reported at the end of the school year where uh, students were able to get a nice uh, filling meal to help them learn. So this year, our church council and finance decided that this year we would give all of our Christmas Eve offering to Royce City ISD to help pay off all of the school lunch debt for the entire uh, campus. So our challenge was for you to think about how much money you would spend on Thanksgiving and also your Christmas meals and set aside that amount extra and on Christmas Eve, whichever service you come to, either the 5 o'clock or the uh, 7 or the 11 o'clock service, bring that amount and place it into the offering plate so that we can be a blessing to our, our students uh, here in the Royce City ISD who may not have the ability to uh, pay off their lunch debt because we know that uh, the best way to help a student to learn is to make sure that they have something in their stomachs during the day. So. We also know that this may be one of the only meals that a student is able to receive during the week. And uh, the idea of letting a child have a couple of slices of bread, a slice of cheese, and a little thing of milk just is not, does not set well with me. So uh, because you are a generous church, because you allow us to be Christ's hands and feet to each other, to our community, and to our world, I thank you for your continued gifts and for the way that you allow us to be in ministry to each other. So would you please pray with me as we lift up our offering this morning. Dear God, you have given us so much. When we look around this room and we see the warmth of smiles, we see uh, friendships, we see family, we give you thanks. So Lord, during this time where we lift up our tithes and offerings to you, we pray a special blessing over all of them. Let it continues to be multiplied and so that we can continue to share the love and grace of Jesus Christ with others. So God, just bless this offering in Jesus' name. Amen.
to you this morning. What's your favorite candy? What is it, Claire? <laughs> Sour Patch Kids. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good candy. <laughs> What's your favorite candy? <laughs> well, let's just go ahead. <laughs> Toxic Waste. Never heard of it. <laughs> okay. My favorite, M&M's. <laughs> Do you think that I can give you, do you think I can tell you the Christmas story with just one M&M? No way. You'll watch me? No, but I can talk. <laughs> You mean show you how I'm going to tell a story with the m M&M? Okay. I'm going to do the Christmas story, and it started years, years ago. Okay. What letter do you see on that M&M? Yeah. That's not an M that way. E. E stands for the eastern sky, where the, the uh, star shone in the eastern sky. So bright. Okay, what is that letter? M, and that stands for the manger that the baby Jesus slept in that night. And Mary, what's that one? A three. What do you think three stands for? The three wise men that brought baby Jesus the gifts. Okay, so that pretty much tells the Christmas story, doesn't it? But now our final one, what's that letter? What's the W stand for? Don't we worship Jesus now? Okay. So I did it all with one M&M, &M, didn't I? Okay. You're confused. <laughs> we'll talk later, okay? <laughs> I tell you what, every time you eat an M&M now, I want you to think of these four, these three letters and that number. And this is something that you can even share with your friends. And you can tell them the Christmas story only with one M&M. Okay? Huh? And it's a story you can eat. I'll get rid of that one. I won't even put that in the bag, all right? <laughs> okay, let's bow our heads, and we're going to go to Children's Church, okay? Dear God, thank you for your love. Help us to share the love with others at this special time of the year. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You don't, don't like it? I don't like it. Don't no. turn it.
So this year uh, marks the 15th anniversary of the movie Elf that came out starring, uh, um, I was going to say Will Ferrell, I was going to say Will Smith. I said, no, it wasn't Will Smith, it was Will Ferrell. Uh, but in that scene, if you, if you remember that movie, if you've seen the movie, you remember how he is uh, moved to the jack-in-the-box section where he's t supposed to test the jack-in-the-box to make sure they all work. And, and he's sitting there, and he just cringes a little bit, and it pops, and then he's that one that doesn't pop, and he sets it aside, and then it pops, and he gets mad. You know, I, I showed that today because today we are talking about glory. And we're talking about the shepherds and the wise men. Now, normally we don't move this far ahead in the story on the second Sunday of Advent. But because we're talking about the 200th anniversary of Silent Night, I want us to think about the surprise that the shepherds had as, as they were out in their fields and the angels appeared. But before we do that, I invite you to join with me as we did last week. We sang the first verse of Silent Night. Would you please join me as we sing the second verse of Silent Night? I have the words on the screen. <clears throat> Is it not the technical difficulties? Well, let's see if we have it by memory, okay? Second verse. Silent night, holy shepherds quake. Shepherds quay at the sight, at the sight. Glory stream, glory stream from heaven above. Heavenly hosts sing alleluia. Christ the Savior. Your is born, Christ the Savior is born. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for the season of Advent, and for the ways that we are able to remember that this movement started by a baby born in a manger. This movement to help us to open our eyes to see the wonder in the world around us, to hear the glory that was proclaimed by the angels. Help that glory be proclaimed by us as we continue to share the message of Jesus with our community and with the world around us. So Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Well, let's go ahead and turn to our scripture for this morning. Our scripture is from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. And we hear these words from the gospel of Luke. Nearby shepherds were living in the fields. They were guarding their sheep at night, and the Lord's angel stood before them, and the Lord's glory showed around them, and they were terrified. And the angel said, don't be afraid. Look, I bring good news to you, wonderful, joyous news for all the people. Your Savior is born today in David's city. He is Christ the Lord. This is a sign for you. You will find a newborn baby wrapped snugly and lying in a manger. And suddenly, a great assembly of the heavenly forces were with the angels praising God. And they said, glory to God in heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angels returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go right now to Bethlehem and see what's happened. Let's confirm what the Lord has revealed to us. They went quickly and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. And when they saw this, they reported what they had been told about the child. Everyone who heard it was amazed at what the shepherds told them. Many co commented these th committed these things to memory and considered them carefully. 
and the shepherds returned home, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen. Everything happened just as they had been told. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So last week our focus was on darkness and how the world was filled with darkness and this light came and the light was the Christ child. And the light didn't come to, to chip away at the darkness, but the light came to fill the darkness. And we talked about how that was our task. As followers of, of Jesus Christ, our task is to go out into the world and fill the darkness with Christ's light. So it's fitting that as we continue to talk about this story, as we continue to talk about the birth of the Christ child, we, we come back to a moment of darkness. We come back to a moment where these shepherds are, are out in the field doing, doing their, their normal work, doing their, their job. They're just out there tending to the sheep. And, and you may, be, may have been out in the countryside or out on the mountains where there's no lights around and you can see maybe shadows here or there, but you can tell and you can feel the darkness all around you. And I love how the gospel writer talks about how suddenly the angels came. Suddenly the angels appeared and, and they filled the darkness with light. The light from God, the light from Christ came and, and, and made itself known to the shepherds. And what that tells me and what that reminds me is that God comes to us in the midst of our darkness, in the midst of, of those times in our lives where we may feel uncertain, but also it tells us that just like the shepherds who, who were there doing their job, they were out doing what the task that they were paid to do, God came to them. And my friends, as we move through this busy holiday season, as we move through this time getting ready to prepare ourselves for Christmas, God comes to us. See, we don't need to go to a specific place to experience God's presence. God comes to us in the midst of where we are, right here and right now. God's glory fills us, and God's glory gives us maybe a surprise wake-up call to let us see that what God calls us to do as his followers through the love and grace of Jesus Christ, is to share that love with others, to share that glory, that glory that comes from our Creator, from our Savior, from the one who sustains us. And the important thing that we must do is that we must take time to remember who and whose we are. We must remember that God has chosen you, that God has never abandoned you, that you are desired, that you are redeemed, and that you are forgiven. So what did the shepherds do after they, they, they saw this magnificent display of, of glory? Well, they put it into action. They put it into action as that they listened. They took time to hear what the angels had to say. See, when we experience God's glory, we must then take time to listen to hear what God is calling us to do. And that, that takes place in many different ways. You know, the, the easiest way is that we listen through Scripture. When we take time to open up God's word, it helps guide us and lead us so that we may then act out what God has called us 
to do. We listen to God through experience. And I tell you, this is the one that kind of bothers me, but I see it happen in my life all the time. That it's when I take time to reflect on the past or reflect on, on, on things that I have done that I see God saying, see, when you were going through that struggle, when you're going through that difficult time, I was there with you. When you were in doubt, I was there. When you were looking for direction and you moved, God was there with you. We also listen to God through the moving of God's spirit. And that may be through you know, somebody that's speaking. It may be through a conversation that you had. It could be a song that's playing on the radio. Several years ago, uh, my mom had uh, a, a brain surgery up in Kansas, and you know, we were really worried about the outcome for that surgery. And, and as we were, uh, she was recovering in the hospital, I had to go back and forth from Wichita, Kansas, where the hospital she was in, to our hometown of Hutchinson, and I was driving back and forth, and I just got this uh, new car that had a little plug where I can plug in my uh, little iPod Nano, and I, I plugged that in and started to drive. And there were like four songs in a row from the uh, Highway 96 going from Wichita to Hutchinson, where God kept telling me that it's all right. Everything is going to be fine. Now, it wasn't necessarily those songs that was doing it, but it was God moving through that music, letting me know that in the midst of this difficult time, in the midst where there was uncertainty, that God was there with me. But see, we have to be open. We have to be listening for God to, to share with us those things. You know, and we have to take time. We have to take time to listen to God. You know, it's funny to me, and again, as I've told you many times before, when I write messages or whenever I'm preaching, a lot of it comes back on me, and it makes me say, ouch, because I see things in my own life that I go, wow, I'm totally missing the mark on this. But maybe you'll understand, you know, we, we spend a lot of time planning out our own recreation, don't we? We spend a lot of time maybe flipping through our phones just doing mind-numbing exercises or, or posting what we think are funny memes on Facebook. And we spend our time and energy doing that. How often do we take time or schedule time to listen to God? How often do we uh, spend time doing all of these other activities, but we fail to take time to hear what God is calling us to do? You know, one of the things that Trace and I, we have done in the past, and, and again, this is one of those things falling back on me that I uh, failed to do. We used to spend our evenings, the very last thing we do, talk about the wins that we have in our lives or those things that we've seen God moving. So I challenge you as, as a family, as you move through the rest of Advent, if you have a family with kids or if you're just a husband and wife or if you have a good friend that you can talk to, think about where have you seen God in action today? Where have you seen God move? And when you take time to reflect, when you take time to schedule those things, then you can see the glory of God that is in your life. The glory that, that continues to move because God loves you and God wants you to know that God is there. See, it's all about a response. See, when we hear God or when we take time to listen to, to the glory that God is around us, we must act. We must move. See, that's what the shepherds did. In our scripture, we hear that after the shepherds heard about the Christ child born in Bethlehem, they said, 
let us go and see what happened. And when the angels, when the shepherds did that, they just didn't meander their way to Bethlehem. No, the scripture says that they went quickly. They went in a hurry to get to where the Christ child was born. I don't know about you, but for me, sometimes when we hear God's message, we like to wait. We like to wait for confirmation. We like to say, well, let me, let me see if God really is calling me to reach out to a neighbor. There, there has to be something. There has to be something that, that, that triggers it. I got a phone call uh, last night, and I looked at the caller ID on my phone, and I was getting ready for, uh, for this morning and doing all my normal routine Saturday night stuff, and I saw the name on my phone, and I went, it wasn't any of you, so just don't worry about it. But I, I looked at it and went, you know, I'll, I'll just deal with that later. I'll just, you know, if, if it's something important, maybe you've done this. If it's something important, they will call back or leave a voicemail. But the phone was sitting right beside me, and I kept looking at it. I kept looking at the name, and I realized I need to pick this up. You know, and, and it was a good thing that... I did because it was somebody in need. And it gave me the opportunity to pour love in to them. And, and who knows what would have happened if I would have let it go to voicemail. Maybe they wouldn't have left a, a, a voicemail for me. Maybe I wouldn't have had the opportunity to let them know that they are valued and they are loved by God. See, part of our response, and I believe part of the response that we, that we do as followers of Jesus Christ is that we live out the words in 1 John 4, 11 that says, Beloved, if God loved us, we also ought to love one another. See, that is the response God calls us to do. To, to allow the love of God to enfold us, to, to wrap us up, so then we can then, in turn, love others. And, and once we are able to return that love, or once we celebrate all that God has with us, then we are just joyful. I, I love the, the songs that our praise team sang this morning. It was all about glory. It was all about joy, because that is what the Christian life gives us. See, the shepherds returned home. They glorified and they praised God for all that they heard and seen and everything had been told. Everything happened just as they have been told and they weren't quiet about it. They were sharing the message of this baby born in a manger in a way that people knew that something Something happened in Bethlehem. So my challenge to you is that something has happened in your life. And that something is the birth of the Christ child. Have you taken the opportunity to share it? And we give you plenty of ways that you can share Christ's love with others. And they may seem mundane ways. It could be sharing one of our little fun little uh, posts that we have on uh, Facebook or on Instagram now. It could be taking one of our yard signs and just placing it in your yard so people know where they can come to experience the birth of the Christ child on Christmas Eve. It could be just taking the opportunity to stop and listen and allow the message of Jesus Christ to be a part of who you are so others may feel and hear that message. See, my friends, the message of the baby born in a manger isn't something to be kept inside of this room. 
the message of the baby born in Bethlehem is meant to be shared to as many people as we can because we know that God's glory calls us to be a part of that message. And God's glory calls us to live in the light. That the glory streams from heaven above are the glorious streams that we proclaim to others. Would you please pray with me? Oh God, we thank you for the opportunity to share just like the shepherds shared in Bethlehem. Just like the angels who, who came out of nowhere to write where the shepherds were, to let them know that they are now a part of the story. Help us to see. Help us to remember that we are now a part of that story. And we are given that task to to share that story with others, to share the love and the grace that passes all understanding. Help us to know that when we take the opportunity to listen, when we take the opportunity to go, and when we take the opportunity to share, we become closer to the one who loves us and cares for us, Jesus our Lord. So help us prepare as we move through the rest of this Christmas season. In the name of the one who loves us and cares for us, Jesus our Lord. Amen. So as the praise team comes forward, we have an invitation. And that invitation could be just think about those who are in your immediate circle of influence. Who do you come in contact with every day? How can you share the hope, the joy that comes from our Savior Jesus Christ with them? It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to you know, give a whole account of, of what Jesus is, but maybe you can do as 1 John says, just to love them, to let them know that God loves them through the love that you have. Or maybe you're asking questions about how can I get more involved or how, how can I continue to grow in my faith. I'll be here or I'll usually stand over there by our guest uh, entrance door if you have any questions about how to get plugged into the life of the church. But I invite you to think about those as we sing our song of commitment together. Gloria, let us stand and sing. <clears> hey, <throat> okay, don't forget this is a little different than the traditional version. <laughs> Angels we have heard on high Sweetly singing o'er the plain And the mountains in reply Echoing their joyous strain Shepherds, why this jubilee? Why your joyous strains prolong? What the gladsome tidings be Which inspire your heavenly song?
Salvation's reason to celebrate On the day The day that you came And how could heaven's heart not break On the day The day so much for being here, for being a part of our worship service this morning. We hope that you are blessed and we hope that you share with a friend. Now receive this benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face or shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. And go in peace.